Hello and welcome to Produce at Home, my new channel. My name's Dave and today I wanted to take you around my little home studio here and show you what gear I've got. So let's get on with it. Right, so when I was looking for a mic, um, I wanted a good, nice, softly sounding vocal mic, but a good one. I used to have a, um, a uh, just a really cheap Shure mic, uh, which is around here somewhere. Actually, I think my daughter's nicked it. Um, but what I did to choose the mic for my voice is, you probably won't believe I did this, but I did. I went to a local recording studio um, where they had 30, 40 different mics knocking about the place, all very, very expensive, very good mics. What I did was I just did a, a, a quick um, blast into, the, into those mics. I think I did 10 of them. Uh, they, they picked 10 out and said these would probably suit your voice because I wanted to find the mic which was going to suit my voice because uh, not just because a mic's I don't know 2,000 quid it doesn't mean it's going to be any good for your voice um, and I knew this quite early on so the one of the first things that I bought was a decent mic um, after I'd used the Shure for years um, having dropped it many many times on stage um, so as I said, what I did, I went to a recording studio, lined 10 of them up, sung into all 10 of them, and I actually picked out a different one when I heard the recordings back. Uh, but when the um, the technician there actually gave me his opinion, which was this, I actually did agree with him. Um, this is a... I've wrote this down because I can't read it on there. It's tiny. It's an Audio-Technica AT4033A. And that mic specifically sounds quite good um, with my voice. Uh, it's got the, um, the the roll off and you know the DB settings, all that kind of stuff. And and I've had this for years. Now, when these were out, so when these were out brand new, they were a hell of a lot of money, um, and I couldn't afford one. So what I did was I kept looking around all, all the websites for a second hand one because the actual studio I went to said if you can find a second hand one that's been looked after then do that so I went on eBay and this one came up on eBay and it was uh, one owner it's like buying a car isn't it one owner immaculate condition it was at the time and it came with its all original boxing all that kind of stuff and I think I got it for about 70 quid I can't remember it might have been 70 pounds something like that but these were hundreds and hundreds back then um, and I snatched this guy's hands off he upgraded to something mega um, and he, he was a proper audio file and he, he'd use this I think for four months uh, in a studio um, so I bought this off him with my fingers crossed when it came, it was immaculate, mint condition. Uh, the only thing I've had to do is put like a little hair band around there so it it sits in my cradle properly because my cradle's no good, that holds the mic. So I know for a fact this mic was good for my voice and I now know buying secondhand mics is actually okay. I've had a good experience. So this is my little mic and... Uh, yeah, I've got no plans to change that. It's fantastic. So you're going to have to forgive me for this. I need to take the shotgun mic off this GoPro uh, because I, I can't talk into the mic while I'm looking at the back of the camera and I need to pick the camera up to show you around my gear. So that was the mic and this is how the mic sits. If you can make that out, um, it sits in a, you know, a nest, a cradle, suspension thing. I've got a pop filter on the front of it. And I've got this, uh, it, it's like an acoustic panel. It's from SE. So if you, you can, I'll list all this stuff down in the comments so you can see uh, where I got it from, how much it is, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is pretty good. Uh, the surround is is pretty good when recording vocals. The only thing I'll say about this is when you, you know, do loud vocals. So if you're, if, you know, if you're a loud singer, it does tend to sound a bit boxy. 
using this so i remove it um, if i've got a singer who's who's quite loud and i i do other things okay so that's the mic set up and it's on a little stand there um next thing i want to show you was the acoustic treatment in this room which is not finished yet so please don't bash me for not having my bass traps up yet they're up in the loft and i need to bring them down um, but i've made custom panels uh, custom acoustic panels on the left and on the right for my first reflections and I've also done the cloud and uh, I've also built my own desk so that desk there I built it I've built my speaker stands which go through the desk and I've built this little cabinet here which used to house all my um, my analog gear uh, which I've, I've got rid of because I, I don't use it okay so Let's have a look at what we've got here. So my computer is a 2011 uh, i7 iMac, fully loaded. It cost me a fortune at the time, and it's so it's over 10 years old now. And I run Pro Tools 8, uh, sorry, Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools 11 on that machine. Uh, I will tell you that my machine so this iMac is actually on its way out so it keeps rebooting every now and again and it is really struggling now when I'm doing large sessions and all that stuff um, so I need to replace that I just haven't got the funds to do that at the moment uh, from the computer um, from Pro Tools and I use Final Cut Pro on there as well to do all these videos uh, I store on external media so I've got some Western Digital slow drives. So these are six terabytes each drives, I think they are. Uh, they're slow drives, I think they're only 5200 RPMs instead of the 7000 odd that you get on a faster drive. These are great for archiving. And then at the back here, behind the meatloaf thing, I've got a G-RAID set up here, which is fast storage. And I've got one, two, three, four, five other Western Digital drives at the back there that's where i store all my media and i i also pop it all into the cloud as well okay for my speakers um so when i started out i had behringer truth i think they're called 2031 speakers they were great when i started out R really reliable um really cheap uh, so good value for money and they sounded pretty flat i really enjoyed them behringers i upgraded um as soon as i had the money to these Neumann speakers. So these are, I think they call them KA120As or KH120As. Uh, but again, I'll put the link down in the description. These, if you've got a little studio like me, are utterly fantastic. They really are brilliant. And the company themselves, uh, it's a really good company as well. Um, I have a complete control S88, I think it's called. Uh, and all the software that goes with it. So this is my keyboard controller that I use uh, to control the synths that are on the iMac. Um, so all the inbox synths. Wicked keyboard, absolutely brilliant. And I use my trusty old Factory 003, uh, my Avid DigiDesign Factory 003 as my um, outboard controller to control my levels and EQ and all that kind of good stuff it's not a mixer it's a controller but that's what I use for that my headphones I have some uh what are these do you know I can't remember oh these are Sennheiser so again um when I bought these Sennheisers uh I went to a shop and I listened to a few of them so when I'm tracking mixing uh, mastering all that kind of good stuff at home here. These open back headphones uh, from Seneza are absolutely brilliant for that. I love using them and listening to music in general on these is an absolute treat. They're brilliant headphones uh, and they weren't expensive. I bet there's some uh, better ones now from Seneza for the same sort of money I paid for them, but they are great headphones. Um, for vocals, when I'm singing or if somebody, well, not that I can sing, but if somebody else is here singing, um, I use these Sennheisers. So these are closed back, uh, so you don't get any you don't get any leakage. Uh, I, I can't read that HD something Pro. Um, again, I'll put the links down in the description. These were not very expensive, and again, these are fantastic headphones if you're um, recording vocals. 
So that's my room and my gear. It doesn't sound much, does it? But once you go in the box and you get, um, you know, all the, I've got all the um, native instruments, plugins and synths, you know, massive, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think I've got like 10 piano, different pianos that you can fire up with all different scenarios and reverbs, all that. I've got everything I need in the box. Uh, and on Pro Tools 11, I've got all my Waves stuff. I buy a lot of Waves plugins because I like them. They, I think they're really easy to use. Um, I don't need anything else at the moment. I used to have a room full of stuff, outboard gear, absolutely full. Uh, you know, since I had a Roland JV 2080, uh, some extreme uh, rack synths in fact I've still got all the racking space available there I actually did a job lot with a music shop down in Surrey um, I got everything together that I didn't want and a guy down in Surrey who, who owned a music shop he asked if he could buy the the job lot and he did he bought the whole lot off me the only other things I've got is um, still up the loft I've got a couple of electric guitars I can't really play guitar but I, I do like to have a go and when a track does need guitar then um, you know, I, it takes me a long time to get the chords right, but I, I get there in the end. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, which I forgot to mention, was so I went and tested that mic out. Uh, that, that's the one I picked out of all the mics I tried. No joke, I actually did that. If you, get, if you can do that, I'm sure a local studio won't mind you popping in for an hour just, just to see if they've got any different mics that you can try. <clears throat> top tip is to do that honestly do that the other top tip i've got for you you probably already know this so forgive me if you do when you're choosing your monitors so your near fields or your mid fields whatever you're going for if you're going to be doing mixing or production or just playing make sure you do a side by side comparison um, if you're going for good value ones as well, so if you go to the music shops in Birmingham or in London, you'll go into a room uh, and they'll have a lot of speakers all set up next to each other, all different price points. And what you want to do is A and B them, C them, D them, E them, F them, uh, and listen to a track that you know, a track that you know well on all of those pairs. And if they have only got a few, go somewhere else. Um, Go in there with a budget, and my advice to you is spend as much as you can on your monitors. If you're if you're producing music and you're mixing at home, uh, spend as as you know use as much of the budget as you can on your monitors and your headphones and your mic if you're singing or your instrument if you're using an instrument. Um, but I went into a music shop in Birmingham and I tested these next to Adams and and a load of other speakers. They had about thirty pairs in the same room, and I just kept flicking between them. I was in there about three hours and I finally settled on these Neumanns who I'd never heard of before. Um, didn't look at any reviews on them. I just went by uh, the listening experience and I bought them. They were bloody expensive at the time and I think they still are now. And if you hear a pair, you will see why. They're absolutely fantastic and they translate well. Um, so that's it. That's my gear. This is my room. I haven't finished it yet. Um, if you want to see how I built all this stuff, my desk, my acoustic treatment, my little cloud set up here and my bass traps, which are not in here yet. Um, they're over on the Thorpster channel, which I also run. Uh, all my DIY stuff goes over on there. So I'll post links to that in the description below as well. And uh, I think that's it, you know got nothing more to show you um so thank you very much for popping along and, and watching this video uh i'm going to try and do two videos a week and if you can support me by subscribing i would really appreciate that uh, but i wish you all the best and i will see you in the next vid all right i'll see you soon bye bye